Hello everyone, and welcome to the first lecture of C++ Real-Time Audio Programming with Bella. My name is Andrew McPherson, I teach at Queen Mary University of London, and I'm one of the original creators of Bella. And over the course of the ensuing lectures, you'll learn how to create real-time interactive audio systems. Specifically, you'll learn how to create the fundamental building blocks of a modular synth, oscillators, envelopes, filters, sequencers, and so forth. Uh, we'll also look at some common techniques used in audio effects, ranging from simple delays through phase vocoders. And we will understand how to implement these things in real time using the C++ language. And we'll look at how to implement these on embedded hardware. Specifically, we'll be working with the Bella platform, which we'll talk more about later on. You can expect to learn several things during this class. Uh, we will look at writing real-time audio code in C++, then implementing that code on embedded hardware. You'll learn the techniques you need to create instruments, audio effects, and synth modules, and learn to turn theory into high-performance working code. Uh, for this class, we assume a passing familiarity with a few concepts from signal processing. Things like continuous and discrete time, time and frequency domain, sampling, aliasing, uh, you may have seen the terms FIR and IIR filter, uh, or convolutions. You might be familiar with the Fourier transform, or FFT. And we also assume that you have some degree of basic familiarity with programming uh, in really any language. Now, if you're coming at this completely fresh, absolutely don't worry about it. Uh, we will define our terms as we go along, and we'll point you to where you can find out more information. The reason I bring this up is because typical digital signal processing courses often focus on this link between specifications and system designs. So for example, if you need a filter to achieve a certain performance, how do you write a block diagram or a series of equations that implements that filter? Now this is not going to be our focus here. Instead, what we're going to look at is how to take a design that we may have been given as equations or as block diagrams and to turn that into code that we can implement on embedded hardware. And we'll implement these things in C++, seeking to write highly efficient code on the Bella platform, which runs in real time. Here's a list of topics that we expect to cover over the course of the ensuing lectures. Um, the idea in this course is going to be that each of these programming topics is going to be associated with one or more music and audio topics. So at the beginning of each lecture, I'll tell you what programming topics you might expect to learn and what you'll build during that lecture. Just a little bit about me. I'm a reader or associate professor in Queen Mary's Center for Digital Music, which is a research group in the School of Electronic Engineering and Computer Science. I lead a team called the Augmented Instruments Lab. Uh, we create, study, and share new musical instrument designs. Here's a brief sampling of some of the projects that uh, we have made in the lab. If you'd like more information about any of these things, check out the lab website there, instrumentslab.org. And of course, one of the things that comes out of our lab is Bella. Uh, this emerged from our research a few years ago and has subsequently spun out into an open source community maker platform. This class specifically is based on teaching that I do at Queen Mary. Um, I teach a class called Music and Audio Programming, which is available on the master's program in Sound and Music Computing and also the PhD program in Artificial Intelligence and Music. Bella itself was developed a few years ago as part of my teaching on this class. Uh, if you want more information about any of these programs, you can find them in the video description. Okay, so for today, here is what you can expect to learn. Uh, this lecture is about getting started, making sure that you have a working environment to build your projects and uh, to take you around the features available on the Bella integrated development environment. Um, there are companion materials for this lecture, which you can find at the GitHub link below. Uh, these consist of some code examples to upload and run, and a few links and references following up on the material in these slides. Of course, there are lots of great books and online resources that you can use to learn digital signal processing and audio programming. Uh, we'll put some of these up on the GitHub page, but here are a few textbooks that you might find useful in expanding your knowledge. Now, to follow along with this course, you don't strictly need anything at all, but if you want to develop and run the examples that we work on in this class, you're going to need a Bella kit. This could be either the standard Bella starter kit or the Bella mini starter kit, and you can find these on our online shop at shop.bella.io. We will be working with hardware in this class as well, and so for a few of the lectures, uh, we recommend that you have a set of standard maker parts, things like a breadboard, potentiometers, push buttons, resistors, and LEDs, and further information about this can also be found on the GitHub page. 
Let's talk a little bit more about Bella. So what is Bella? Well, three things, really. First and foremost, uh, Bella is an embedded computer which is designed specifically for interactive audio. The idea is that it combines the power of a single board Linux computer like a Raspberry Pi with a kind of connectivity to hardware sensors and other devices that you might associate with microcontrollers like Arduino. So we're trying to get the best of both worlds in terms of computing power and also connectivity to low level parts. Bella also introduces a new approach to working with sensors, where the sensors become like extra audio signals with high bandwidth, high sample rate, high bit depth, and it lets you use a lot of the techniques that you would normally use on audio signals on your sensor signals. Um, as part of this, Bella supports extremely low delay or latency but between the input and the output, and uh, a really high degree of timing precision between the sensor signals and the audio signals. And we'll talk more about this in later lectures. Finally, Bella is entirely open source. It's open source hardware and software. You can find the designs on our GitHub page. Um, it's targeted at makers, musicians, artists, and designers. And uh, as part of this, we have a series of community resources, which we'll talk about more shortly. So here's an overview of the Bella hardware. It runs on the BeagleBone Black single board computer, which has a one gigahertz processor and half a gigabyte of RAM. It has some other useful features uh, which let us write high-performance audio code, which we'll return to later on. On top of the BeagleBone, we install the custom Bella audio sensor cape. The Bella cape provides stereo audio input and output, and eight channels each of 16-bit analog input and output, along with speaker amplifiers. Here's a view of the connections that you have available on the Bella cape. You can also work with digital inputs and outputs and with the resources on the BeagleBone things such as USB and Ethernet. Equally for this class, you could use the Bella Mini. Bella Mini offers most of the core features of Bella in a package one third the size. It also has stereo audio input and output and eight 16-bit analog inputs. In contrast to the standard Bella, it doesn't have analog outputs and it doesn't have speaker amplifiers, but the processor is the same and the amount of memory is the same, so generally speaking, any program that will run on a standard Bella will also run on a Bella Mini. A bit more technical detail on what lets Bella achieve its extremely low latency. We're using a real-time Linux kernel extension called Zenomai, which lets us run our audio code at the highest possible priority on the hardware, essentially higher than the entire operating system itself. And what this means is that we can make strict timing guarantees that our audio code will always be able to run no matter what else is happening on the board. Uh, the result of this is that we can get latencies as low as one millisecond from input to output. And this is very useful for making highly reactive and realistic musical instruments. Bella also has a built-in browser-based IDE for developing your projects. So you just bring the board up in the browser and you have everything you need to compile and run code right there on the board without installing external tools. The IDE also has a browser-based oscilloscope which can be useful for visualizing your signals. Beyond C++, Bella supports quite a number of programming languages, um, things like PD, Super Collider, and C-Sound, which are popular music programming languages. Um, some of these are maintained with support from the open source Bella community. Of course, in this class, we're going to be working in C++. The idea here is that we want to work very close to what the hardware is actually doing, um, which, in addition to giving us a great deal of control, also helps us understand how embedded systems actually process and generate audio. When we do our job right, it's possible to write extremely efficient code in C++, but of course we still have to work at it, and that will be part of the topics of the coming lectures. Perhaps the most important thing to know before we get started is where do you find more information if you have questions? Uh, we have a knowledge base at learn.bella.io, which is a central repository of information about getting started, about the various things that you can do with Bella, and uh, more information on the hardware and software. We also have a support forum at forum.bella.io uh, where you can get support from the community. We have a blog at blog.bella.io uh, which features projects made by us and others. If you have a project that you've made using Bella, drop us a line because we always like to feature projects from our community. And we have a repository on GitHub with the Bella Core software. Um, there is more technical documentation available at the moment at the wiki link um, from this repository, though eventually this will all migrate to the Bella knowledge base. 
Specifically for this class, uh, there's another GitHub repository, Bella Online Course. Uh, this is where for each lecture you'll find lecture slides, you'll find code, you'll find other links and resources. So this is perhaps something to bookmark as you go along. Okay, let's get started. What we're going to work on here is attaching the Bella board to your computer. We assume that you have either a Bella starter kit or a Bella mini starter kit. And for the most part, all we need to do is plug it into the computer, uh, attach our headphones, and away we go. Just a note that users of macOS Catalina will need to install drivers before they can get started. You can download those from learn.bella.io slash drivers. So let's switch over now to look at connecting the board to our computer. Here we have a Bella starter kit. So you can see that we have the Bella cape on the top and the BeagleBone Black on the bottom. And there's a USB port here for connecting it to the computer. So all we need to do is plug that in. And you can see that the blue light comes on here. And after a few seconds, you should see the lights by the USB port start to flash. It can take up to 30 seconds for the board to boot and for the IDE to be ready to load. Uh, during that time, we can also connect our headphones. So we need one of these audio adapter cables that comes with the Bella. And we plug that in here to the port labeled out. And then we can plug that into our headphone jack here. So there we go. Uh, this is what we need to get started with. If you have a Bella Mini, the steps are similar. Uh, now, just check that you have an SD card inserted here uh, into the Pocket Beagle, because the Bella Mini requires an SD card to boot. Um, the USB connection to the computer is here, uh, so you can just plug that in. And likewise, you should, start to, you should see a blue light up here, down here. And the lights will start to flash. And after about 30 seconds, the board should be ready to bring up in the IDE and you can connect your headphones to the same place here, the connector labeled out. The next step then is to bring up the Bella IDE in your browser. We recommend Chrome for this, though it should work in any browser. And the address you have to go to is bella.local, or in some cases, one of the two IP addresses on the bottom here. So let's do that now. We'll go to HTTP, bella.local, and it can be important to put the HTTP there so that Chrome knows that we're entering a web address and not doing a search. And here we have the Bella IDE. Uh, we'll take you through the details of this momentarily, but let's get started straight away by running our first project. What I want you to do is go over to the Examples tab on the side, which looks like a light bulb icon. You can click on this, uh, then click on the, uh, the category called Fundamentals, and load the example called Sign Tone. This example just plays a 440 hertz sine wave. Uh, it's a really good way to check that our sound is working. So to run the project, what we do is we go down here to the lower left-hand corner of the browser window uh, and click the Run button. And what you'll see is that it'll turn yellow, it'll spin while the project compiles. Uh, this can take a couple minutes if, the, if it's the first time that you have connected your board. But when that's done, it'll turn green, the project will run, and you should be able to hear the sine tone playing. And once we're happy with that, then we can hit stop. And the project should stop running. Let's have a quick tour through the features of the IDE. So starting from the top tab, we have our Project Explorer. This is where you can see a list of the projects that are on your board, create a new project if you want, and you can also see the files that are in the project that you're editing right now. So here uh, we have render.cpp, there's only one file in this project, and that is open for editing in the browser here. You can scroll down and see what's inside of this example. And you can edit the code straight here in the browser, you don't need to save it, it's saved automatically, you just hit the run button to, uh, to rebuild it and run it again. The next tab down is the examples. Uh, we have quite a wide suite of examples, um, many of them in C++, a few of them in other languages like PD, Super Collider, and C Sound, uh, covering everything from the basics through some uh, examples of musical instruments. So poke around at this uh, if you have some extra time. Here, the third tab down is the settings. You can use this to change various aspects of how the program runs, uh, things like the audio block size, some of the levels on the analog inputs and outputs. Um, there's also the ability to set a project to run automatically at boot. Now, this is really useful because what it means is that when you're done coding your project, you can set it to run automatically when the board is plugged in so that you don't have to have Bella connected to a computer anymore. You can just run it on a battery and the project will run straight away. 
Um, here is an interactive pin diagram that you can use to refer to what each of the input and output pins does. So rather than having to keep some sort of printed card or web reference, all you have to do is mouse over the pins in this diagram and it'll tell you what's what. Here's our analog inputs, here's our analog outputs, um, digital IOs here, uh, audio inputs and outputs, etc. And you can review the different Bella products here. Uh, there's some additional documentation tabs down here at the bottom of the IDE. Uh, for the most comprehensive documentation, we recommend, again, that you go to the Bella knowledge base at learn.bella.io. Now, before we go further, what we need to do is update the software running on our board. Even if you bought your Bella board relatively recently, we've made some changes to the Bella core software just for this class, and it's important that you be running the absolute latest version before going onward. If you've been using your Bella board for a while, before you update the software at all, uh, we strongly recommend that you back up all the projects on your board. You can do that from the settings tab here, go down to other system functions. There is a button called download all projects, and this will download a zip of all of the projects that you have saved on your board. To update the Bella IDE, what we have to click is this button here called Update Bella, and this is going to give us the opportunity to choose a zip file with the Bella core code in it. Now the place to go to get the latest version of the Bella code is learn.bella.io slash update. And uh, that will take you to a link to our GitHub repository where you can download the latest version of the Bella Core software. Uh, download it as a zip file, keep it as a zip file, don't unpack it. And then you can supply it to the Bella IDE and it should update automatically. Now, just a note, if you have an older version of Bella, um, such that your IDE does not look like the one that we've been looking at here, um, you may need to update your board differently. There's a script you can run from the terminal to update the board, which you can get by unzipping the zip archive that you download, um, or perhaps simpler is just to flash a new SD card image. And if you have a very old version of Bella, uh, more than two years old, let's say, you'll need to flash a new SD card image. Again, don't forget to back up your projects before you update the IDE. So we're going to update that now. Here we go, we're gonna choose the file that we want. We click on choose file. And here we are, we're gonna select Bella master.zip and click open. And then we say update now. Now what you'll see is down here at the bottom, it'll say uh, beginning update, this may take several minutes. Indeed, expect it to take a few minutes because it's unpacking all the new core Bella software and the new Bella IDE. Um, during this time, you can't use the IDE. When it's done, the browser window should reload. Here we are then, the update has completed and you can see that we have reloaded the IDE and we have a uh, project open. What we're going to do next is upload a new project from the companion materials of this course, which we'll use to show you the process of getting started with new projects and looking at some more advanced features of Bella. So what you need to do is go to the companion materials on GitHub. That's github.com slash Bella platform slash Bella dash online dash course. Uh, if you go into the lecture zero materials, you should find an example project called Shepard Rise um, and download this zip archive. And what you're going to need to do next then is drag the zip file into the Bella window on the IDE. So we drag the zip file into the Bella IDE. You see it turns green. And when we do that, it asks, do you want to create a new project from this zip file? If you don't see this message, you probably don't have the latest version of the IDE. So go back and update that now. Now we click on create project. And we should find that we have a new project called Shepard Rise. Now, what is this? This is an implementation of a classic auditory illusion called the Shepard Rise Glissando. It's a kind of musical barber pole effect where it's a tone that is perpetually rising and yet somehow never manages to get any higher. If you want to hear how this works, just click the build and run button. And after a few seconds, you should start to hear it running. And since we just updated our board, this will take a few minutes longer than normal since we have to recompile all the Bella core code, but it's only the first time that happens. So once it's finished compiling, the project will run and we will hear the Shepard tone effect. Now let's use this opportunity to look at a few of the other features of the Bella IDE. 
One of the things that Bella offers is an in-browser oscilloscope to visualize your signals. And we have that set up in this project. So what you need to do is go click on the oscilloscope button in the toolbar at the bottom of the window. And here we can see the waveform of the shepherd tone as it's being synthesized. There are various controls in the oscilloscope that you can use to change the scaling, uh, for example, to change the time uh, resolution of the display, zooming in or out on the waveform, um, changing the vertical scale of the display, various settings having to do with the triggering of the oscilloscope, which we'll look at in a later lecture. Uh, and the scope is also capable of multiple channels, and that just depends on how your code is set up. So that's the oscilloscope in brief. Another useful feature of the oscilloscope is that it can display not only the time domain waveform, but also the spectrum, or FFT, of the signal. So if we select that view, we can see these kind of peaks marching along as the shepherd tone runs. If I change the controls here, uh, try changing the x-axis from linear to logarithmic scaling, and change the length from 1024 to something longer, like 8192. And finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the scale of the display so that we can see those peaks a little bit better. There we are. We'll turn that off. And here we see the shepherd Rissé glissando in action, that each of the sine waves gradually fades in in the low frequencies, rises through the frequency spectrum, and then fades out in the high frequencies. So let's go back over to the code here. Besides the oscilloscope, another useful trick uh, that Bella is capable of is to make custom GUIs that run in the browser. So to see the GUI we've made for this project, you can click on this button here on the toolbar that says Launch GUI. And here we can see uh, an animation which is being controlled by the variables inside of our Bella program. So we're using the Bella program to control the visualization that we see in the browser. And conversely, we can use what we do in the browser to send messages back to the Bella program. So in this case, you can see that moving the mouse up and down in the browser will change the speed of the Rissé glissando effect. So we'll stop that for the moment. Now, we haven't yet looked at editing code in the Bella IDE. Uh, of course, we're going to get into a great deal more detail on how to write programs in C++ on Bella, but for now, just to work with changing the code and recompiling it, let's try altering the effect a little bit. In render.cpp, in this project, I want you to change knum oscillators from 8 to 24. What we're going to do is we're going to have more sine wave oscillators, uh, which are more closely spaced together uh, compared to the example that we just looked at. So I want you to change KNUM oscillators from 8 to 24 and change K frequency ratio, which controls how far apart the oscillators are in frequency, change that from 2.0 to this expression here, which is 2 to the power of 1 third or the cubed root of 2. So like this, uh, K frequency ratio is equal to pow f, uh, parentheses 2.0 comma 1.0 divided by 3.0. And notice it is actually important to have the 1.0 divided by 3.0. If you just do 1 divided by 3, it won't work properly. We'll come back to that in a later lecture. So having made this change, we can run the project again. We'll see that it rebuilds render.cpp. That's the only file that we've changed. And you should hear that it goes from sounding like a single tone to sounding more like a chord, still gradually rising. go back over to the oscilloscope and we can see that there are a great deal more frequency peaks in the spectrum compared to before and we can go over to the GUI and you can see that the stripes on the barber pole are spaced more closely together so here we see a bi-directional communication between the GUI and the Bella program it, the GUI is getting its data from Bella at the same time as the GUI is controlling Bella so these are the kinds of things that you can do in a Bella project. We'll stop that now. 
If you wanna have a look through this code, um, what you'll find in here um, covers a few of the techniques that we're gonna look at in more detail in the ensuing lectures. The real-time audio computation is done in this function called render, um, which we'll talk about more soon. And it is generating a series of oscillators um, and using um, a simple C++ class to represent each one of the oscillators. If you also go back over here to the files in the Shepard Rise program, you can click on sketch.js. Sketch.js is where the browser-based GUI is implemented. Um, this is using the p5.js library, which is processing for the browser, basically. Uh, processing is a popular language used for creating graphics and interaction. So we support a whole variety of open source tools on Bella, and this is just a little um, a taster to the kinds of things that we're gonna look at in more detail later on. Um, final thing is when you're done with this lecture to shut down your board, there is a button here in the browser where if you click on it, it will ask if you wanna shut down Bella. It's important to shut it down gracefully because it is a Linux computer and you wanna make sure you don't have data loss. Alternatively, uh, you can shut down the board by holding the white button that is on the top of the Bella Cape for several seconds. You should see the lights start to flash more rapidly and the board will shut down in about five seconds. So that brings us to the end of our setting up lecture. Please keep in touch with us. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Bella Platform. Um, there is the Bella Forum at forum.bella.io, the Bella Blog, where you can find projects made using Bella. Uh, of course, the Knowledge Base is at learn.bella.io, and you can find a comprehensive list of the resources and links uh, and our contact info at learn.bella.io slash resources. So thanks very much for following along. In the next lecture, we're going to start up with the basics of real-time audio programming in C++, looking at how we would take a project which was originally not written to be in real time and convert it into real-time code. So thanks for following along. See you next time.